Hello again friends and welcome to a new video where you get to see my face for a little bit. In this video I'm going to show you a way of starting a null binding piece that's different from my other tutorials. The first two videos I did on null binding worked on a method of starting from the opening of a garment up. In this video we'll be working from the close end of a garment down. This is useful for hats, socks, mittens and other similar garments. I will be using York Stitch, which I feel is one of the easiest stitches and definitely good for beginners. Please note that this is just one method, it's the way that I do it. It may not work for you, but nothing is easy in the beginning so persevere before moving on to another method. Also while I really enjoy null binding and lots of other people seem to enjoy what I make with null binding, I'm by no means an expert in the field, just an enthusiast. Now let's begin. For today's tutorial I'm using 100% wool 8 ply yarn, so you should be able to find something comparable at any craft store that sells wool yarn. For practicing this bit alone, or if you have an allergy to wool, the yarn type ultimately doesn't matter, so if you have some acrylic already at home, feel free to practice with that. However, if you are continuing on with other tutorials, or if you're going to buy yarn anyway, or if you're continuing on with a larger project after this, and you are able to, I would strongly suggest that you buy pure wool yarn. This is for two reasons. One, it's better for the environment in the long run, and two, it's easier to join the ends of your yarn together with pure wool over acrylic. I'm putting together a video in the near future about how to join your ends for null binding, so click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell to hear when that goes out. Now that you've got your yarn sorted, grab your needle. I'm using a bone needle that's 1cm wide at the eye and 8.5cm long overall. Measure out about a metre of yarn and break it. Yes, I said break it, don't cut it. Now thread your needle and you're ready to go. Using the tail end of your yarn, and at this point it doesn't matter which one's the tail, create a slip knot. Make sure that the tail is the part that adjusts the size of the loop in the slip knot. This becomes important later. Put the loop over your thumb with the tail pointed into your palm. Okay, so for those of you who've watched my previous null binning videos, you might be thinking, hey, I thought you said you didn't work on the thumb. And you'd be right to question it. I don't normally work on the thumb and I don't normally work top down like we're doing here. But in the rare instances where I need to, this is how I do it. Moving on. To begin, pass the needle down the thumb under the slip knot. Next, pass the needle through the first loop and underneath the slip knot on your thumb and make sure it is under the yarn working tail. Pass the needle through both loops and underneath the slip knot. Now pass the needle through the second and third loops you've made and underneath the slip knot. From here on, only pass through the two most recent stitches you've made and under the slip knot. After you've made a few stitches, you'll see the chain forming like we have in previous videos, but this time you'll see all of the stitches are linked on the slip knot. Once 
When I'm making a pair of socks for myself, for example, my foot's a size nine. So to begin with, I'll start with 15 stitches on my slip knot. Once I have 15 stitches, I take the work off my thumb and I pull the tail of the slip knot tight, then spread the stitches evenly around the slip knot. As I am right handed, my most recently made loop should be on the left hand side of the piece I'm working. To start the second round of this piece, I'll insert the needle from front to back into the first and second stitches on the right side of the piece. I should have two stitches on my needle. Now with the tip of the needle at the back of the piece, I'll insert the needle into the three stitches to the left. Now I should have five stitches on the needle. Pull the needle through, making sure the working yarn is in front of the needle. Now pull just tight enough that that loop you have made disappears. Where you inserted the needle on the right, you'll insert the needle again. This time, when we're inserting from the back to the front on the left, we'll only pick up the two most recent stitches, not three. The needle should come out one stitch to the right of where your working yarn came out previously. So that should be four stitches on the needle. Then you pull through, this time with the yarn behind the needle. You've just made the first stitch in the new round. From here, you'll begin increasing your stitches until your piece reaches the desired width. More videos to come on increasing and decreasing your stitches. Well, I hope that helps a little bit as a different way of starting your knob bending piece. If you've got other suggestions or requests for tutorials that I do in the future, leave a comment down below and I'll see you there in the comments section. Bye for now. Oh, come on, Win. Come on. Just let me record. Yeah, the microphone's picking up all of that. <laughs>